welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be part two of my Habakkuk study. Um, in my last video, I went over chapters one and two, and I'll do a really quick overview now too. But if you haven't seen that video, definitely go check it out. It is a little bit on the longer side than my videos normally are, but I think everything in it is good. But I could be a little biased. Below you'll also find my notes to Habakkuk. Um, it'll take you to my website where you can download it for free and you'll also see links for my 90 day Bible reading plan and just the video that goes with it where I explain the plan. And I'll also leave the second, the first part of this video linked down below. And throughout this video, just like in my last one, I'm going to be referring to my Life Application Bible. That is um, my main resource that I'm using um, as I read through my um, Bible plan. I do also use my Bible knowledge commentaries and like other Bible studies, but that one is the one that I've been going to the most these past few weeks. So. I'm going to do a very quick summarization of what we went over in the first video and we're talking about Habakkuk and he was the prophet to Judah. The purpose of Habakkuk is to show that God is still in control despite the apparent triumph of evil. And then for the setting, my Bible also said Babylon was becoming the dominant power and Judah would soon feel Babylon's destructive force. Um, just like northern Israel, um, Judah is being judged for their for their sins, they have turned from God, they have turned to idols, turned to other um, countries, other nations, instead of turning to God. So God is punishing them. He is laying out judgment to his people and God is allowed to discipline us the way he sees fit and he is going to be using Babylon. And Habakkuk's first, the first two chapters go over Habakkuk's um, first question to God, which is kind of like, um, God, um, where are you? Do you see what's going on? The world is evil. What is going on? And God answers him and he's like, hello, sir. Do you need me to move that stuff? Back to where I was. Um, and then God answers Hosea, you know, kind of like, I hear you. I see you. Um, and I'm, I'm working. I'm doing something. You just can't see it. Because um, sometimes we think that God is not working, but he is. And we can't always see or know what God is doing behind the scenes. And it's not our place to know. The second question is Habakkuk asking God, like, why are you using this evil nation? This, a this nation is also evil. They are corrupt. And he just can't understand why God would use another nation that is evil. God answers Habakkuk saying, you know, punishment is coming. Like he sees what they are. He sees that they are evil and he can do things the way he wants to do it. Punishment was coming, even if it was slow to come. God told Habakkuk to wait. When we wait, we have to trust that God will do in his timing. To trust God fully means to trust him even when we don't understand why events occur. And then God goes into Babylon, how he knows that they're evil, how they trust in themselves and they trust in idols. And he sees all the corrupt that they are and they will they will be judged too. You know, God does things the way God wants to do it in his timing, his will, the way he wants to do it. When we get into Habakkuk chapter three, which is the last chapter, we are getting into Habakkuk's prayer. It is his response after God has answered both his questions. You know, the, the, the book starts off of Hose, Hosanna. The book of Habakkuk starts off with him crying out to God and asking him questions and just like really praying out to him like god why is this happening and then we see a shift in chapter three where he is saying he's praising god he his prayer turns into praise and he he's just prayerful he's just praising god for who he is and what he has done and what he's going to do my life application bible says habakkuk praised god for answering his questions evil will not triumph forever god is in control and he can be completely trusted to vindicate those who are faithful to him we must quietly wait for him to act in my bible reading plan we're going through proverbs and we went through hosea and you learn that god disciplines his people but he disciplines them out of love our god is a god of love and mercy and he wants us to turn to him he loves us too much to let us stay in our sin and he wants us to turn to him my life application bible also said habakkuk knew that god was going to discipline the people of judah and that it wasn't going to be a pleasant experience but he accepted god's will asking for help and mercy habakkuk did not ask to escape discipline 
but accepted the truth that Judah needed to learn a lesson. How many times do we ask God to to not punish us for our sin that we are deserving of? Even though he has already he has already done so much for us in our lives. Like he has already sent Christ to die on the cross and paid the biggest debt that we could never have paid. And yet we ask him for more. And I'm not saying that it's bad to ask God for things or to pray or things like that. But it's like an attitude shift where are we sinning? Are we abusing our Christian liberty? Are we abusing God's mercy and grace to the point where we don't want to take responsibility for the consequences of our sin? God still disciplines in love to bring his children back to him. Accept his discipline gladly and ask him to help you change. When God disciplines us or when we're in sin and we know we need change, we should ask God to help us. We should have an attitude of growth in times of discipline. Like how can we grow from this? How can we change our sin pattern? We do not want to stay in sin. That that, that is not the point of Christian life. The point of the Christian life is to become more Christ-like and to share Christ with others. So if we are sitting in our sin, we are not growing, we are not learning. And God disciplines us to help us grow, to glorify him so we can turn back to him. I like what it said here because in Habakkuk he mentions, uh, where are we? He mentions Israel within his, uh, not, yeah, Israel, within his prayer to God and how he brought them out of Egypt. I don't know. Can't find what I was looking for. I'm missing something here in my notes. But it's okay. The concept is not being just in awe of God. Because we should. We need to be in awe by God's power. But it's a life-changing power. We need his discipline to learn how to obey God. We need his discipline to learn how to love others. We should constantly be in awe of God. But we should be changed by it too. Habakkuk ends his prayer with these couple verses, uh, three verses. It says, though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail and the fields yield no fruit. The flock be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes my tread on my high places. Habakkuk ends the book rejoicing in God's punishment to the people because he knows his God is powerful he knows his God's strength and even though the people are going to suffer they're going to go through famine they're going to starve they're going to be overtaken by the the Babylonians like he is still able to praise God through that and that is the attitude I want to have when I am living life when I'm going through trials even when God is disciplining me and things are happening in my life that I am not happy about I want to have the right attitude and still give God the praise that he deserves even if I don't like what's happening crop failure and death of flocks would devastate Judah but Habakkuk confirmed that even in times of starvation he would rejoice in the Lord Habakkuk's feelings were not controlled by the events around him, but by faith in God's ability to give him strength. When nothing makes sense, and when troubles seem more than you can bear, remember that God gives strength. Take your eyes off your difficulties and look to God. This is my prayer. Habakkuk is rejoicing. He understands God, and he understands he is not in control. And I can struggle with that. This is my prayer that I would rejoice in God always, that my emotions would not be controlled by the things around me, by this world, by the corrupt things that are happening, by my specific circumstances, by the things I don't like, that my faith would be in God's ability to strengthen me. And I pray that my focus and my eyes would always be on God. I mentioned in the last video that sometimes there's this fear in me, there's this lack of confidence in God's ability and I think we all feel like that at times and I'm learning that despite that God can still work in me my prayer especially reading after reading Hosea and Habakkuk these Old Testament prophets one to northern Israel one to Judah where you have Hosea 
preaching to the people to repent and turn from their sin and the boldness to stand before these very very corrupt people and preach God's word and then you have Habakkuk who brought the people's questions to God it just reminds me that I need to pray that God would give me the faith like these people that I would be bold in his word and his teaching and be confident in faith and in his promises and in his power and strength um i mentioned mark 9 24 last time in the chapter the man like i mentioned before is he is son his son is demon possessed and the disciples could not cast out the spirit jesus did the child's father said I believe help my unbelief and Jesus cast out the, the spirit later on you see the disciples saying why could we not cast it out and Jesus said to them this cannot be this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer so it makes me wonder because the the disciples had started doing things in the name of Jesus so and obviously this was a teaching moment were the disciples overconfident and started trusting in themselves instead of God and what God could do when they started seeing the things that God was doing through them? Or were they missing something? Were they lacking faith? And it just, this is what God is teaching me is that I need to rely on him and his strength that he, and the things that he does through me, not the things that I do in my own power. So that is everything that I have for Habakkuk. Obviously, there's probably so much more that you can get from this book. This is what I got out of it as I read through it, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, definitely leave, definitely give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and if you would like to see more Bible study type videos here on my channel, and definitely leave a comment down below if you've read Habakkuk and what you've thought of it, what you've gotten out of it and yeah and anything else i'd love to chat with you guys down below so thank you guys again for watching and i will see you guys in my next video